Hello, everyone. Today, I wanted to take a second and talk about Kara McCullough. Who is Kara McCullough? She's a bitch! Kara Deidre McCullough is an American beauty pageant title holder and a physical scientist at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. On May 14, 2017, she represented District of Columbia at Miss USA 2017 and was crowned the winner by outgoing title holder Deshauna Barber, also of the District of Columbia. McCullough was born in Naples, Italy to Betty Ann Parker and Artensel E. McCullough, Sr. Her father was a member of the United States Marine Corps and she thus lived in various places such as Sicily, South Korea, Japan, and Hawaii. She was later raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia. McCullough attended South Carolina State University, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry with a concentration in radiochemistry and served as the school's 75th Miss South Carolina State University. While a student, she was a member of the American Chemical Society, the Health Physics Society, and the American Nuclear Society. She has been inducted into the Golden Key International Honor Society and the National Society of Black Engineers. One might argue that's pretty impressive for a 25-year-old. A young, talented, beautiful, educated black woman winning the USA crown? The left must be pleased. Or are they? No, they are not. Because she's guilty of wrong think. Do you think affordable health care for all U.S. citizens is a right or a privilege, and why? I'm definitely going to say it's a privilege. As a government employee, I am granted um, health care. And I see firsthand that for one, to have health care, you need to have jobs. So therefore, we need to continue to cultivate this environment that we're given the opportunity to have health care as well as jobs to all the American citizens worldwide. That, my fellow YouTubers, is blasphemy, according to progressives. Remember what Christopher Hitchens said. But there's a tendency on the left, and I bet there are people here who know what I'm talking about, to think that if someone in any way dis disagrees with the left, it must be for the lowest possible reason. And that if you found the lowest possible motive, you found the right one. There's this whole culture of no one would, would leave us or quarrel with us if they weren't a sellout. It's actually a very sick mentality and very widespread. And here they go. It didn't take them very long. Miss USA, Kara McCullough, thinks unemployed shouldn't have health care. The future of the American Health Care Act may remain unclear, but one thing is certain. Kara McCullough, who on Sunday night went from being Miss District of Columbia to Miss USA, doesn't have much sympathy for people who don't have health insurance. This is what progressives always do. It's not that you think there may be another way to resolve the issue of people who don't have health insurance without violating the liberties and freedoms of other people. But no, you just don't care. You don't care about the people who don't have health insurance. And this is how they slander you. This is how they assassinate your character. It's not that you have a different idea on how to handle these problems. No, it's that they care about how to solve this. You don't. You don't care about people without health care. You're the bad guy. There are many, many reasons why we do not prefer today's health care system but I'll just cover a quick few. The cost of healthcare, 1958 versus 2012. Mark Perry has posted some interesting comparisons on how prices have plummeted between 1958 and 2012 when measured in terms of the hours of work required to purchase items. He concludes that today's consumer working at an average wage of $19.19 would only have to work 26.6 hours, a little more than three days, to earn enough income, $511, to purchase a toaster, TV, and iPod. The equivalent products, in terms of their basic function, not their quality, would have required 4.64 weeks of work in 1958. In short, the time cost of these items has massively declined by 86% in less than five decades. Similarly, Perry calculates that measured in the amount of time working at the average hourly wage to earn enough income to purchase a washer-dryer combination, the time cost of those two appliances together have fallen by 83% from 181.8 hours in 1959 to only 31 hours today. What if we applied this kind of analysis to healthcare? The results are quite interesting. In 1958, per capita, health expenditures were $134. This may seem astonishingly small, but it actually includes everything, inclusive of health care paid for by government or private health insurers, a worker earning the average wage in 1958, $1.98, would have had to work 118 hours, nearly 15 days, to cover this expense. 
By 2012, per capita health expending had climbed to 8,953. At the average wage, a typical worker would have to work 467 hours, about 58 days. In short, while time prices for other goods and services have shrunk to less than one quarter of their 1958 levels, time prices for health care have more than quadrupled. For purposes of time, I'll skip around a little bit. This simple comparison reminds us of three basic truths. In general, private markets tend to produce steadily lower prices in real terms, e.g. in worker time costs, and steadily rising quality. This is exactly what we observe for goods such as toasters, TVs, iPods, washers, and dryers. In contrast, while the quality of healthcare unequivocally has risen since 1958, real spending on healthcare has climbed dramatically. If we were willing to rely more on markets in medicine, we might be able to harness the superior ability of Americans to find good value for the money to produce results more similar to other goods. Now, we've barely touched on some of the reasons why we believe that free markets can handle the healthcare problem more efficiently than government can. But contrast this belief based on some facts to how progressives treat people like Kara when they dare stray from the narrative. You don't have to be a nuclear scientist to think that nuclear scientist Kara McCullough is pretty dumb. The newly crowned Miss USA dropped a bombshell with her, quote, thoughts, unquote, on healthcare Sunday night when she declared that healthcare is a privilege and not a right. This from a scientist for the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Granted, one still parading around in a bikini, but still. This kind of stupidity on the world stage is cruel, and worse, it's dumb and ill-informed. Way to promote women in science and technology. It's one thing to make smart people look bad, but another thing entirely to make women look bad. What does Kara's sex have to do with anything? The subject we're talking about is healthcare, but you turn it into a feminist issue, like you always do. This author must still be mad about this. What do you consider feminism to be? And do you consider yourself a feminist? I've liked to l lately transpose the word feminism to equalism. I don't really want to consider myself. Try not to consider myself like this, like, die hard, you know, like, oh, I don't really care about men. But one thing I'm going to say is, though, women, we are just as equal as men when it comes to opportunity in the workplace. Oh, she's gone and done it. She's gone and committed sacrilege. And boy, are the knives going to come out now. Or should I say claws? McCullough did all women a disservice with her remarks on health care, but she did more damage with her dismissal of feminism. The brainiac beauty prefers equalism to feminism. Can you imagine the utter gall of Karen McCullough equating feminism with equality? I mean, how dare her? <laughs> you can't write this stuff. I swear, I mean, sometimes the best thing to do to the left is just give them the spotlight. Let them hang themselves with their own actions. They don't even bother to understand the arguments against socialized health care. They just assume that the people who oppose it have the worst possible motives. I mean, it's not just that we believe that the free market itself can offer health care to much more affordable costs for everybody, but also we oppose the idea of conscripting a health care provider to a service. I mean, this is a direct violation of liberty and freedom. With regard to the idea of whether or not you have a right to a health care, you have to realize what that implies. It's not an abstraction. I'm a physician. That means you have a right to come to my house and conscript me. It means you believe in slavery. It means that you're going to enslave not only me, but the janitor at my hospital, the person who cleans my office, the assistants who work in my office, the nurses. If you have a right to their services, basically once you imply a belief in a right to someone's services, do you have a right to plumbing? Do you have a right to water? Do you have a right to food? You're basically saying that you believe in slavery. You're saying you believe in taking and extracting from another person. Our founding documents were very clear about this. You have a right to pursue happiness, but there's no guarantee of physical comfort. There's no guarantee of concrete items. In order to give something concrete or someone's surface, you gotta take it from someone. So there's an implied threat of force. If I'm a physician in your community and you say you have a right to health care, do you have a right to beat down my door with the police, escort me away, and force me to take care of you? That's ultimately what the right 
to free health care would be. If you believe in a right to health care, you're believing in basically the use of force to conscript someone to do your bidding. Now, just because it's a noble thing to believe that we are obligated as Christians, we are obligated through the Hippocratic Oath, we have always done this. Since the beginning of modern medicine, we have always provided 100% access. I do it in exchange for privileges. I do it because I believe in the Hippocratic Oath, but my hospital also says to me, you can only operate in this hospital if you agree to see everyone coming through the emergency room. I always have, we have always treated, we have always had 100% access through our emergency room. No one wants to see anyone denied any medical care when they're in need, but it comes down to how best to resolve this situation. If you believe that the free markets can handle it and offer low prices and affordable prices to everyone, that hospitals themselves can have rules and regulations and where they monitor themselves and ensure their attendants are taken care of, or do you believe that the government has to come in with a gun and force physicians to take care of people? I believe, and I think the evidence shows, that when you involve government, you make things more expensive and less efficient. If you want to disagree on that, that's fine. At least then we could sit down and talk about our differences. But instead, what the left does, and what they always do, is they ignore what your actual points are, and they want to tell you how bad you are, and they want to tell everyone else how bad you are. And that is exactly what happened to Kara McCullough. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to my Facebook, Twitter, and Minds.com page, all of which will be provided in the description below. Take care, and until next time.